let's go to where are we i think we are going to talk about the airplane stuff yeah so this just uh, so we use the model of the when you take a, a air trip okay when you take the airplane it's like um, we use this uh, as a analogous to the to the layered tcp ip model or layered network system to try to yeah yeah okay sorry so so when you deal with try to deal with a very complex system yeah it's a one very effective and efficient way is to to view this system to make a model of system that's layered model and the so-called layered just say you have a stack like tcpi model has stack of five layers some people argue say it's only four layers but it doesn't matter in our textbook we have, we say the five layers uh five layers you say so this five layers in a stack which is one layer top another right so when you add one layer you only deal with the layer above you and the layer below immediately below you so you don't deal with the whole system okay so that's the just uh, make this uh, system works rather than and uh, rather than when you design these protocols you don't need to consider the whole system you only consider the the neighboring layers and also when you do the when you have the basically means the port at your layer port means like the pathway like uh, to other layer okay so the port to the layer immediately above you and also the port to the layer immediately below you those are different so you can separate these two functions okay you can separate these two parts so that makes uh, your protocol design and programming and uh, execution easier much simpler okay so so just like this air uh, air travel like model so so uh, for example after you check in you are just looking for the correct gate number okay so which gate you don't you do not need to concern which airplane or or or, or um, which ran away or whatever or even what seat you have you don't need to worry about it. you only need to worry about that so you find the right gate number when you get gate number get there then you're going to start to do the next step so <clears throat> So okay, there's not much to uh, say. Okay, here is the Internet Protocol stack. So in our five-layer model, we call you got to remember this. I think this is the uh, okay. Let's uh, zoom in a bit. Uh, so this five-layer models. So the top layer is a. Uh, the top layer is application. The application layer, that's the contents of the chapter two. So that's been next. And then, and then the chapter three will cover the transport layer. And then lower is network layer, link layer, and physical layer. We say the top layer is about like a, so for us, at the end user, you only deal with the application layer. If you are uh, some app programmer, you deal with the top two layer. 
So the lowest three layers actually they belong to the network core. Okay, so the first, the top two layer uh, actually at network edge. So, so the different layer actually provide different services. So. <coughs> So now let's look at this. At application layer, uh, we have protocols like FTP, uh, SMTP, HTTP. Okay, SMTP is for email. HTTP does web browser. Um, the transport layer, uh, we have very important protocol TCP. And also UDP is also kind of important. Network layer also have a very common protocol, IP protocol. The TCP IP, that's probably the top two important protocols in the whole network. That's the, that's the, what is it called? The spine of the, the whole system, the whole network system. Okay, TCP IP, that's so named the TCP IP model. Actually, that's the two most important protocol names. <clears throat> and also, there's a, a bunch of uh, co-routing protocols. So there are many of them. So we're going to cover in that uh, application chapter 2, transport chapter 3, network chapter 4 and 5. And chapter six, so we're going to cover link and physical layer, both layers. <clears throat> okay, link layer, data transfer between neighboring. Yeah, so this Ethernet protocol, this is also a protocol. Okay, Ethernet protocol and say 02.11 protocol. Sorry, there should be. There should be two ones, okay, not three one. I think that's the one. Well, okay. So, so AO2.11 is called Wi Fi. Physical layer, yeah, I'm gonna treat in bits. Um, yeah, we don't talk much about physical layer. Uh, you can see last chapter we majority comments uh, uh, the most content in the chapter six deal with uh, uh, link layer we have a little bit physical layer um, this diagram is also very important so you can see f first of all so here is the source and this destination those are just should be the network edge like and system, okay. We do you still remember what are the network edge? What are network com? Network edge, including the and systems, or access network and link the link to the first router, something like that. Uh, so network com is about routers or or network. Of networks of road networks, so so in network core we have road and switch. So now what I think this one is important as the title indicated encapsulation. Encapsulation. Let's see. You have. Let's suppose you are a network user. Okay. You you let's say you send an email. So this message, so here the message M is the email, your, your, your email content. Then you type in your e email and uh, you e use the email apps, right? So type in your email. Now this email, how does email is going to be sent, okay? How did this piece of email being processed before sending out from your source computer, from your end system as the source node, 
before the email was sending out, let's say, let's see what kind of process has been, uh, yeah, has been added to this uh, 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 email. So email first, so email will encapsulate a uh, HT, this is called header. The H stands for header. So we put a header, we call transport layer header. Okay, I think the transport layer actually we can specify, actually it's the TCP protocol. So we call it the TCP header. If you know the protocol that you can call TCP, or you say just transport layer header. You put this header to this message, this process is called encapsulate, okay. And, and then, your message plus the header, the name is also changed. This package name is called segment. So when you say the segment, when when people say the network segment, so that's referred to uh, the packet is at the transport layer. You just have beside the message content, there is only one header. It's a transport layer head, okay, HT. Then this transport layer after your email content email being processed at the transport layer, then transport layer will will relay this will process and forward it to the network layer or forward it down. Okay, so to the down to the network layer. Then at network layer will added another header. It's HN. Okay, that's N stands for network. The H T T stands for transport. Okay, so so encapsulate, put another header, and we know the IP address is actually processed at network layer. So this HN should contain the IP address of destination and also source. IP address too, okay, source and destination IP address should be included in in this HN, this header. Uh, the after done that will be put to the link layer, or forward to link layer. Link layer will have HI, another header. Then the name has been changed to the frame. So when you say frame, sometimes you're probably wondering, Especially we haven't go beyond the chapter one, so you know. I mean, sometimes uh, we call it the, like a, a packet, but sometimes it's called segment or datagram or frame. What is difference? So here, just clearly show those difference. But when you say packets, packets is a kind of general term. You can view. Uh, you can call packets at any layer. You call it Packets. Okay, so <clears throat> so all these things. Then, then let's say, then the, this frame will go down to the physical layer. Physical layer has no packets. Physical layer treating data as the bit stream. Okay, then this physical layer will let's say then your email data left the source node, excuse me, yeah. left the source node, then reach to the network core, let's say reach to a switch, or oh, this switch may not be the network core, okay, so maybe it's in your access network. But anyway, we can view it uh, as network core, it's also okay. But it, not much difference. Okay, here is a switch. Switch. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the switch has two layers, physical and the link layer. So this red line, so you can see, it jump up one layer and then going down. So that means the jump up means that go to the link layer. So link layer header will be processed. 
So link layer head will be analyzed and processed at the switch. But the switch will not touch the HN, HT and the message contents. So those link layer do not process on, on other headers like HN, HT, and M. So link layer only process that HI, okay? So, so actually they process, so switch process link layer is actually one of the most important operation performed at link layer is to analyze the link layer address. So to forward to the right, uh, to the right link, right output link. And also for certain link layer protocols, there's also like error control property. They probably they check the received data is any, is any error or not. Okay, so. And then they say we pass switch, go to the router. Router, you can see the router actually process all the bottom three layers. So that means the router will, will be analyzed its HI and also HN, these two header. HN is a network layer header, it contains IP address. So we say router is responsible to routing. Routing means let, then router has to check this packet, the IP address, like destination IP address, then use, then input this IP address in, into the routing algorithm, then routing algorithm's output will let the router to decide which output link it should forward your packet to, okay? So, so that's, in other words, then you can see it is a switch. Switch does not responsible, does not check your IP address. Okay, switch only check your MAC address. So called MAC address is actually the link layer address. So we're gonna cover that yeah, in chapter six. <clears throat> uh, so router we, we, we cover in chapter four and five. <clears throat> so, so router is responsible to check your, your packets, uh, each packets, uh, the IP address. And then finally probably this, uh, usually it will pass many routers, okay, it's not just the one. And then from router, let's say, reach to destination node. The destination node, then let's say the receiver, email receiver is able to receive, uh, re uh, to read your email, right? So before that email could be read by the email recipient, uh, actually there's also, uh, there's many which you call demodulation or called the deca uh, decapsulation was called, yeah, just lay, so you can see from each layer, so direction is like this, from bottom, since the uh, incoming data is coming from a physical layer, right? So the process is from bottom up, but at the sending end, at the sending end, the process is from the top layer to bottom layer, right? right? So that's uh, direction different. So and so you can see at each layer they are going to remove one one header, a link layer. They're going to process the link layer head and remove it, then forward to the network layer. The network layer will will process on the network layer header and then remove it, then forward to the transport layer. The transport layer analysis to the uh, transport layer header, then remove the message content to the application layer. So at the application layer, the e email receiver can read the email. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so the, those is actually 
how they do this at each layer, what this header. So each header actually, each header contain like many fields. Okay, certain field may just uh, 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 store certain information. Okay, those information, it could be some address information, could be like error control information, or it could be just indicated the packets has the certain priority or certain type of data. Is the data type or or audio, video, all these things. Okay, so <clears throat> and also there's other important is uh, as since for the large email it probably like uh, split into a few packets. Okay, and a few packets then how the packets can be reassembled. So this has been being being divided. Okay, at the source that are going to reassemble. It together to form the, a large email at destination, all this information uh, are carried at a certain, uh, at a, the certain layers head information. So, so that's the, basically the whole, the whole chapter, each layer chapter. So now I think you have probably have a very rough idea about how each layer uh, work. Okay, now let's, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, sorry, yeah. Um, okay, we have the last uh, section about network security. Yeah, we talk a little, it be now security has one chapter, I think, but we don't, uh, we do not plan to to cover that that chapter. We 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 have only have time to cover the very important those uh, five layers. We just cover five layers. There's an extra chapter on certain selected important topics like. Uh, one is the wireless network, other one is the multimedia network, and also network security. That's, so we have three more extra chapters on, on, in the textbook. They're also very interesting, uh, very important topics in, uh, in network, but, but we don't have time to do that. Okay, network security. <coughs> So field or network security, how bad guys can attack compute networks, how we can defend network against attacks, how to design architectures that are immune to attacks. Um, internet was not originally designed with security in mind. So internet initially designed just for the effective communication, okay? And efficient communication. So when, if you see the, the the books, we keep talking about the throughput, the bandwidth, and the time delay. We try to shorten the delay as much as possible. We try to provide uh, for the fixed uh, link bandwidth. We try to accommodate as many users as they can. So we're talking about efficiency, most likely. Security actually is not, uh, definitely is not a major concern, or even at the beginning of the internet, it's not a concern at all. <clears throat> but nowadays, since the internet has been used uh, for very, doing very important business, like uh, financial, uh, financial transaction, and also uh, some kind of, you know, uh, since the internet becomes the backbone network for the all kind of communication, which is include uh, like uh, the top government confidential some kind of message transmission, military uh, communication, we also use the internet. So all this internet, <coughs> so, Internet actually provides a 
many many services and some of some of those services are very very highly confidential in that case definitely now the network security is uh, becomes i think one of the most important and also most uh, researched area okay so <clears throat> um so actually security non -con security consideration in all layers so <clears throat> now let's see what kind of but uh, first when we talk about security yeah we know that there's i just mentioned there are the high confidential communication over the internet we need the security right but first of all when we have the security because we have attack because they exist the attack so then we need security if there's no attack then we don't need security right but you say since there exist bad guys so we need to protect the good guy from the bad guy if this world if there's no bad guy in this world then we don't need to have those uh, like security mechanism be installed right so now first try to design or to implement those security service and security mechanism first we have to actually classify the attacks okay so certain security services probably can only uh to be used to safeguard a certain type or to be resistant to a certain type of attacks there's no single security mechanism that can be like protect the all different kind of all the whole range of attacks no we have to <clears throat> make those uh, security mechanism more efficient and effective and actually we need to f the first step if you study network security your first step you have to study attacks have to study the malware have to study what is uh, 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 malicious uh, software m malicious hardware all these things so and then you can then you can uh, uh, then you, you can work on the 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 protection mechanism that can effectively to to be uh, 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 resisted to these attacks <clears throat> so malware can get in host from virus worm Virus is the self <coughs> so so okay, so this uh section about network security we just very very briefly talk about that, okay, just like uh, uh, um, uh, informative style, introductory style. We're not going to go very detail. Okay, virus and worm are different. Virus is a um, um, virus. You cannot be executed. Uh, I mean, virus cannot execute by cannot execute by itself, but the worm can. Okay, so that's the one of the. Uh, um, important difference spyware malware can record keystrokes a website visited download information to collection site in fact the host can enroll in botnet used for spam ddos attacks ddos is called um, distributed denial of service attack so DDoS is uh, quite popular and also it has uh, 
left its mark in in the in the history of the internet. So I think that uh, about like uh, some years ago, a decade ago, I think Yahoo network was down because the DDoS attack, and also some other yeah big name like internet. Uh, in their side uh, was attacked by, by this one. DDoS basically idea is um, uh, some attackers they they steal the password, the the login information, login information from uh, of many nodes. Okay, many computers, a huge number of computers, and then. At a certain given moment, then the attacker control a large number of computers to simultaneously to send the request to a certain uh, attacking target target website, and then to make the target website down. Usually, the target website could be a, a like just Yahoo website, let's say it's like a large commercial website. So basically, it does not do uh, much like uh, internal damage. It just make that uh, uh, so 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 because a large amount, a huge amount of requests sent from bottleneck, and then that. Target website just down. There's no uh, so customer customer service is down. So just since there's overwhelming uh, request, being sent to that website. So this is called denial of service attack. Um, so this attack is I think those are usually the victim side just down for a few days or a few weeks. Then after it is done, then then it can just uh, to 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 work again. So there's not like a fundamental damage. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but this is um, sending packets. What's that? Yeah, select tag. Target break into host run network and send packets to target from compromised host. <coughs> yeah, bad guy can sniff packets. So now here is um, let's see um, what we have here. Why shall software used for energy system is free? Yeah. So the sniffing, sniffing basically is also called in terms of uh, uh, um, yeah, it's also called reverse dropping. Okay, reverse dropping just uh, you try to uh, intercept uh, confidential message transmitted over the network just uh, illegally. You try to read, yeah, okay, try to access this information. So basically, I think the network service that can can be effectively to prevent this kind of attack is do the encryption. If you encrypt message, that should be okay. Yeah. Back I can use fake address. Yeah. 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 You can Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the fact address is uh, is this kind of a kind of similar attack called impersonating attack. Just say uh, the bad guy pretends somewhere else. Okay. Just uh, they can use the face address. Um, 
Yeah, so, so the, this, uh, this kind of attack, we can use the so-called authentication, user authentication. Okay, you have to, when you communicate with someone, you have to, you, you can use a certain, uh, certain protocol that contain the authentication uh, service. Authentication there is uh, commonly used called uh, uh, MAC. MAC is called message authentication code. You can apply the message authentication code to your email or to your like transmit data, okay. You transmit data appended with MSC code, then you can make sure that um, that's uh, uh, what you received. So you can check the MSC code to check that is this, uh, um, it, if the data you received is valid or not. Okay, so this is called, that's the very commonly used uh, uh, the security measurement that's to uh, effectively to to use for resistance to those uh, 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 non-authenticated data to or to 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 provide data integrity something like that. Okay, so that's the history. The last section about history. Yeah, history we already cover a little bit at the beginning yeah, of the slides. And you can read the textbook. I always think the history is good. Uh, uh, when you study a subject, you always um, know, it's always the, a good idea to know its uh, background, to know its origin, so uh, to know the history, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that that's the all for chapter one. So we're going to move to chapter two. We still have some time. Okay, so we definitely are going to use it. Uh, now let's see. So I'm going to look at so chapter two. So we started to talk about this uh, five layer uh, network system. We start with the top layer as the application layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So application the the outline is um it's in first the, the principle of network application and then then from section two from second section we can start to talk about the protocols the application layer protocols. So the first protocol we cover is HTTP. And then we're going to co cover email protocols, which is a suite of protocols, SMTP, POP3, so IMAP. So you can see email is not just a one protocol. Actually, the, uh, that's a set of protocols. And then, Next the protocol called DNS protocol. Yeah, DNS is actually very important. Even it it seems like it did not provide the, the direct service to 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 an end user, but it's actually for all the all the uh, application layer security. Uh, sorry. Application layer protocol all need to use DNS. All need require the service provided by DNS. So, so this is very important. Okay, so we we'll definitely will cover that. Then we're going to we're going to also to 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 discuss one example about this P2P application. Yeah, P2P is a kind of unique. Because P2P protocol, so-called peer-to-peer uh, protocol, that's quite different from most other protocols. 
um, most other application very vocal is called the uh, the server client or or client server model, but this just say the protocol architecture are different. P2P is the peer to peer, so the protocol works in the, between the two parties. These two parties actually basically do the same thing, provide the same service. Okay, but in the server client model or client server model is most others. For example, HTTP is you run a web browser. You try to browse some kind of web contents from another server. So what you are visiting, the other, <coughs> the other party is the server that provide those web contents. While you, you are just browsing it, okay? So, so you, yeah. So you are the client, and that was it, the server. So, so it's a, sorry, that's, um, yeah, I think I should put my phone in mute. Um, yeah, sometimes happens. I just, I think, that, this afternoon just it happened multiple times. Um, okay. Um, so uh, in the 2.6, there's a video streaming and content distribution network. This one, unfortunately, is not covered. This one is actually very interesting. So, so now I, I think you have so, I think now, now, now actually, my kids actually don't like watch TV as often as we did uh, usually do. They just uh, probably use like YouTube or some kind of social media, right? So all this YouTube, this kind of thing, this is actually the uh, video distribution network. So th those is much to do with this. So actually this two point six, those contents will get more and more important and uh, yeah, and but the, the, this one we do have a chapter after chapter six, following chapter six, I think it's probably it's chapter eight in textbook, we have a multimedia network actually, that, so that in that, cha in that chapter we talk more about this. Okay, so in 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 these chapters, even we have a, uh, we have a, we have section on this, but we do not we do not go that. Uh, okay, we we we, we don't ca uh, talk about that. And also, two point seven is called socket layer program socket layer programming with UDP and TCP. That's in a separate file. I intend to cover it, but this one is basically is a, is closely related to the planned project. Uh, there's a Python programming for the uh, for the socket layer programming. Uh, actually, but right now it's still a tentative because it looks like. Um, since all our lab and the project heavily depends on, since we have to use the communication, when you go to communication, there's lots of issues involved. F uh, yeah, frankly speaking, I did not um, thinking that was, I did not think that was much, I just say you can do it, if you can do it at campus, you can also do it at home, right? So everything's, uh, connected to the internet, but actually there's a lot, there's some kind of practical issues to solve. For example, I try to, in, uh, try to run the Wireshark software on my, on my own laptop, just to use my uh, uh, home Kotchiko provided like the internet service. But it looks like Kotchiko, when they provide service to the residential area, there's a certain setting we cannot 
change that kind of setting. And in that case, some blocks, some kind of packets has been blocked, cannot be shown. Okay. So I, actually, I spent like two weekends trying to solve this issue. That's very silly. It had nothing to do with the, the, the network, just like a setting of some port, like a wireless access point, wireless router, modem, how to set, how to, how to configure, OK? Yeah, it's really, really frustrating. And even now, I think I still cannot see HTTP packets with my one shark software yeah um yeah anyway but that's something else no let's go so so what i try to say is let's just go one lab at uh, just uh, one by one okay so i think you should be able to lab once inside just say you're going to use the uh, campus based computer so i so i run one time so we, everything look fine so we're going to do it then lab two lab three let's see how far we can go okay <clears throat> uh so i will go for chapter two conceptual transport layer service models so when we talk about application layer application layer is the top layer there's only one other layer that is the neighbor to application layer, which is the transfer layer. So that means this application layer only need to deal one other layer. That's the transfer layer. When you deal with the transfer layer, there's so-called socket. Socket can be uh, uh, viewed as the port, okay, that connected to the transport layer. So basically, application layer programming, it basically you need to program that socket. So how you can do uh, passing data to the transport layer. <clears throat> or you can receive data, the pump up from the transport layer. So you can deal with that. Um, So let's, the common network apps, okay, so here also are, are common network applications, email, web, uh, text messaging, remote login, P2P file sharing, multi-user network games, streaming, stored video, like YouTube, Netflix, Voice over IP, like Skype. Real-time video conferencing, social networking, and such. Uh, yeah, so this uh, creating a network application. So now the very rough idea about the creating a network application is um, it's let's see. Uh, Write program for write program for the end system. No need to write the software for the network core device. Routers. We have a switch, so those are you. You don't need to worry about that. You only write for the end system. Yeah, run on run on any system, communicate with the other end of system over network. You need to consider the end system as you and also at the end system across the network. Just say from sender receiver like that. For example, e email uh, email protocol as the as the application layer protocol you have to uh, deal with the sender and the receiver to both this, especially web service software communicate with broader software. Yeah. 
Network core device application or any system allow for rapid app development propagation. Possible structure of application. So, so that's also called the protocol architecture or protocol structure. So, application protocol structure, application protocol. The two type, the client and server peer to peer. Most of them are client server type. Peer to peer, which is the, so I'm going to talk just one example at the end of this chapter. Client server architecture. The server is different from clients that server is always on host. Okay, both server clients and systems. But server is supposed to be always on, okay? Just power on, okay, always power on. Has the permanent IP address. Oh, uh, yeah. And that is in the for scaling. A large number of hosts work as the virtual server. So just like you, let's say you're going to use Google for search, right? So when you type in like www.google.ca, that's definitely not one server, uh, not one physics machine, okay? There's many, many uh, machines that uh, should be very high and uh, like uh, had very high computational capability. Those uh, machines will work together as one virtual server. Yeah. So, so when you get, but when you try to uh, uh, use use the Google, it, it will. Google will have a certain like internal some algorithm called probably called like a load balancing some algorithm that they're gonna direct you request to one one physical computer, but your request is still being processed by one physical uh, computers in Google, but the Google with the same IP address, the same same name, I mean, this looks like the same server from outside, but the inside is actually a, a huge number of them, okay? So how to, for the Google part, for the server part, how they, they even, they have a huge number of computers work as the one virtual server, but when there's an incoming request, then how the Google server going to 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 assign that request to one specific hardware? I mean, one specific physical machine. Then they they actually use some algorithm called uh, uh, load balancing. That's also a very active research topic in this. Mm, in network area, but but I don't think we will cover that. So there's many things as I, I mentioned uh, before. There's a ten top uh, internet research problems. Uh, they regard as the ten hard problems about internet. We probably only deal with like five, okay, four or five, okay, and also we deal probably only very basic manner okay it's uh, we 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 don't uh, cover like uh, uh, this topic is the the most like research front line so we're not going to talk about that so as we are only in the undergraduate so <clears throat> but at least, at least we're going to cover at least we're going to we're going to deal with uh, 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 some of those uh, uh, hardest problems in the internet. 
the client, the communicator with server may be uh, intermittently connected. And if you say server is always power on, then 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 you can imagine the client as the client. You 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 don't need to always keep power on, right? Um, may have a the dynamic IP address. Yeah, so that that's right. If you connect it to the Wi-Fi, then each time you you connect the Wi-Fi, then may, it may have a different IP address. Do not communicate directly with each other. Yeah, so client to client, yeah, they do not communicate directly. Yeah, so, okay. So P2P architecture now is different. It's not always on server. There's no always on server. The so arbitrary and the system directly communicate. Just in P2P architecture, any two system, any two peer can communicate with each other directly. Peers request the service from other peers, provide service in return to other peers. They call the self scalability, uh, new peers bring new service capacity as well as the new service demands. Uh, so we're gonna, as I mentioned uh, at the end of this chapter, we're gonna uh, discussing a kind of detail about one uh, one P two P protocol. It's called the BitTorrent. Okay, so we're gonna show how the BitTorrent work. I think. That kind of apps are just for 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 people you can download movies. I think uh, so. So I think that's um, yeah. I know one of my friends just just like to download the movies. I think. Oh. Okay. So first you have to have a seed, right? You got the seed, then you're gonna. Let your computer power on, like, uh, yeah, then you put seats there, then start running, start computer running for the computer to run overnight. And then next the morning, or you can say, wow, I got those movies are done. Okay, movie are download are uh, probably a few gig bytes, a huge movie file. Now, uh, so you start download this evening, then Tomorrow evening you can watch the movie, something like that. <laughs> I don't Peers uh, are connected and change IP address complex management. Okay. Yeah. P P2P. P2P has some uh, yeah, I think right now the network has been like to IP uh, V6, we know. Now usually we have IP4, right? IP6 kind of have something that uh, kind of uh, P2P program like BitTorrent has some difficult or have some issues, okay, uh, with like a new uh, new protocol, like okay for certain networks, especially for certain access, maybe inside a certain access network, the, 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 the BitTorrent like P2P may not be available to you. So that's it. Um, some kind of, you say some firewall actually they block this P2P uh, traffic. Uh, so that's have some issue. The process communicating. Okay, process the programming running within a host. The two processes running on the same host communicate using inter-process communication. Yeah, processing different hosts communicate by exchanging message. The client the server, the client the process, and the server process. The client the process means that process that init initiates communication. 
the server process process that respond to the uh, ways to be contact uh, the size application with P2P architecture has client process and both kind of server processes you know. so client at the client side it run the client process at the server side it run server process so that's from pros the process point of view that's the typical uh, perspective that from a computer science student or computer science researcher <clears throat> socket socket is the process sends and receive message to and from network through its socket so what's socket socket analogous to door sending process shove a message or door and the sending process rely on transport infrastructure on the other side of door to deliver message to socket at the receiver process. So if we view this as the sending side, this is the receiving side, the sending side will send this, uh, <coughs> will shovel the message out of door. So basically at at the application layer, that will show the message to this socket. So this socket is the door to the transfer layer. But if you are looking at from, let's say, if you are standing at the application layer, then this door, yeah, this socket is actually to connect the application layer to the transport layer. But if you are only concerned with the application layer, you are at the application layer, then this door, you will feel like this door is directly connected to the application layer at the, receive, at the receiving end. Since you don't see all this, lower layers those lower lower layer process is transparent to you okay you you don't see them so basically when you when you shovel the message into the door is actually then the message will be immediately to pop up at the door at the receivers and just pop up from the transfer layer to this layer so you can see just uh, like um, uh, so as a programmer then you need to as the application layer apps programmer you need to program this socket so, so we call the socket programming socket programming is essential if you uh, want to do any programming work for the uh, for the apps uh, okay sending yeah so that's the so I think we are going to also talk a little bit about very superficially about the port numbers socket numbers uh, this uh, the addressing process to receive messages the process must have identifier host device has a unique 32 bit IP address yeah here does IP address of host on which process runs surface identify the process no okay many process can be running on the same host so besides IP address we need some uh, we need something else to identify the process. So identify include both IP address and the port numbers associated with the process on host. Example port numbers. HTTP server use port number 80. Mail server use port number 25. 
then to send HTTP service to, let's say, uh, to this website, then you need to have IP address, then you also need to have a port number. So these two combined, then you can, yeah, then, then you can make the HTTP connection to the, to this site. More sure. Since this this web address actually in the in the network, this uh, this we call URL, right? So URL will be uh, will be will be we call the translated to the IP address. Okay. So this one will be translated to IP address. And also HTTP request will automatically to carry these port numbers, which is 80. Then combine this IP address and the 80, it will connect it to located to the, this computer to the process that for the HTTP process. Since this is the computer, the target is computer, but on that computer there could be many, many process running on that computer. It could have email thing or could have the games or could have like some all different kind of software, different processes running on that. But with this port number, then you can just connect it. That's where identify is the HTTP to view to, to treat it as the HTTP server. Well known port numbers. So the so port number one is the TCP port service multiplexer. Let's just not go through this when most of them we we want mentioned again, okay, so we're gonna forget. Let's say this one, I think it's important, the DNS protocol, domain name system, use a port number 53. HTTP use AD, okay. And also, yeah, email and use this. So, this one HTTPS used 443. So HTTPS is actually equal to HTTP combined with the called socket layer security. So HTTP is the uh, you can view HTTPS as the secure the version of HTTP, okay. Um, so there are also some other interesting protocols. Let's see, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, let's just go over, yeah. So those are, for oh, now. Application layer protocol defines Type of message exchange, message syntax, message semantics, meaning of message rules, uh, open protocol. So this one you will see. So when we cover like HTTP protocol, I think it should be the next section. And then still next section will cover uh, email protocol. So you will see there's a format of the message. Okay, so they're going to deal with this like a type of message, like message syntax. And also, oh uh, yes, this evening we're going to show you the wine shark. So in the wine shark you will see, you will be uh, 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 easily see, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, actually that's the one shot is a software we call packet analyzer. It can show all the packets. It can show all the, uh, I would say, uh, the packets at different layer with different header information. 
So that software actually can show the header information for different headers. So that's the very interesting part. OK. Uh, uh, proprietary protocols like Skype and also so those it has a few like uh, it also has a uh, include many important application layer protocols but those protocols are not open they are source code not open so we so we were not able to talk about that What transport service does an application need? Uh, transport service does an application need data integrity? So basically, just say when we say when you do the programming at the application layer, you don't need to consider the lower layer, right? But the lower layer can provide service to you. So what are those services that lower layer or since if you're talking at the application layer, then the only layer it can face to is transport layer, right? So we say, what is the transport layer? What transport service that can provide for the application layer? So we have all this data integrity, and the timing service and throughput. Throughput probably say that if you need a certain like guaranteed throughput, then you can ask the uh, transport layer, right? And also security. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all this. Uh, transport service requirements, common applications. Now I'll probably give a little bit uh, more examples and uh, give you a clear, uh, uh, a clear image how this uh, uh, transport layer service, uh, how the uh, how the application layer apps needed from the transport layer, OK? So for example, application layer, let's say you have file transfer. File transfer can be examples like FTP. But the FTP's function has been replaced, has been uh, 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 substituted uh, or replaced with HTTP, since we can use the web browser to do uh, File file transfer. You can download the, the 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 file, right? Use the web browser. Um, so so for for the uh, uh, for the tra uh, file transfer uh, service that provide at the application layer, you need service from transfer layer is there should be no data loss. The throughput is OK. There's no strict requirements for the throughput. Since data transfer, as a file transfer, you don't need to do it like in real time. It can take longer. It's OK. It would take a, a few seconds or even up to a few minutes if you download a large file. It's still OK. So we say throughput requirement is elastic, it's flexible, OK? Data loss, there's no loss. Here is a very strict requirement. So if, there's, uh, if you allow data loss, then when you download the file, then that file could be corrupted and useless, OK? Um, but it's still depends on what type of file. Here, I assume it's, uh, I think when you mentioned data, a file transfer usually means data file. 
data file, then if you have like a few bits flipped, then this file could be used this, okay. Um, uh, the time sensitivity, the time sensitive is no. So there's also no hard requirements on the timing issue. So it's, you can take longer, take sh short actually time and through for the dosa, just kind of, yeah, 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 they are different. Probably related, but not different. Throughput means just to say how fast or that is doing one set. Uh, 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 throughput usually is a very hard requirement for video, audio services. <coughs> okay. So for the email, email basically is the same as file transfer. Okay. So for the web documents, it's also the same requirements. Uh, so all this on the left hand column, for the left hand side, all these applications are application layer services. All other column, except the, the most left column, all these are the requirements that um, for the transport layer, okay. Um, so real-time audio and the video. Real-time audio video, so usually is loss tolerant. So for the video audio, if you have a few, few bits flipped, usually it's okay. So probably you have some glitch on the video. You have a little bit, maybe a little bit mosaic or something. Uh, so those are those are fine, actually tolerable throughput. But for the throughput, there is a kind of there's a requirements, high requirements. So for audio, you have to have this range. For video, you have usually in this range. Time sensitive, yeah, yes, yeah. It's usually it's uh, uh, zero point one like. Second, okay. Stored audio video, yeah, it's loss tolerant, same above, but there's no time sensitive. There's no time sensitive. Interactive games, then we have this, this, this. Text messaging have this, okay, so you can see that's, <coughs> so basically, you will see, okay, for the, when you do the programming, when you program an app at the application layer, based on your requirements for the transport layer, you probably, your, your apps probably need to invoke the different transport layer protocols, okay. So the transport layer protocol, there's mainly two of them. One is the TCP, other one is called UDP. Yeah. yeah. Or transport layer protocol services. TCP service, TCP can, can provide reliable transport between sending and the receiving process. Reliable transport, that just means it can provide, uh, it can guarantee there's no data loss. It's a reliable transport, right? Uh, so for the email, for the file, file downloading, definitely you're gonna need the TCP service. So that means if you do the, if you, let's say, develop a, a new app, uh, at the application layer, which uh, in which some kind of file uh, file downloading is involved, uh, then you need to call for the TCP service at the application layer. So in that case, when you do the socket programming, 
you are going to use the TCP that socket that just port number. So port number will be matched to TCP. Yeah. But if you use the UDP, then you're going to use the different socket. OK. So TCP provide a reliable transport, flow control, congestion control, does not provide the timing, minimum throughput, guarantee, and security. So TCP is connection oriented. So a current connected basically means they need to set up a set up stage. UDP service is provide unreliable data transfer and it does not provide the reliability, flow control, congestion control, timing, throughput guarantee, security, and connection setup. So it looks like UDP didn't do anything so here. It provides unreliable data transfer and also does not provide all these, all the bunch of these things. So why bother? Why is there UDP? But the, when, when it says it does not provide anything, uh, but, but still things. When TCP say I can prove I can provide reliable trans uh, transport, I can provide flow control, congestion control, and I can provide the the, the, the connection uh, the, the the connection based oriented communication. But you know all this I come at at a price, okay. Every service provided come as price. So those services need a process. Process will cause delay. So in in other means, in other words that or it implies the TCP can provide many services, but definitely it will have involved there should be a large processing delay involved. But the UDP since they do not provide those, so they don't definitely those uh, processing delay should be minimized. Okay, so the UDP still have uh, its importance. At, at least the UDP should do. So remember, in the five layer diagram, the five layer for the internet uh, uh, system. Okay, that. At least the UDP will, at least at the sending end, UDP has to add the transport layer header. At the receiving end, it has to what has to remove the transport layer header. That that's the that's the basic uh, service that. Uh, that a protocol at a certain layer should provide, right? So UDP still this service called uh, this service called uh, what's it called modulation or called uh, encapsulation, right? So this service UDP can provide. <clears throat> Internet apps application transport protocol. So now we can see at application layer when we have email, then we will call uh, email. We'll use the application layer protocol. It's called SMTP. Yeah, it's been standardized in RFC 2821. I see the uh, request for comment. I think the full name is the request for comment. It's a kind of a standard document for those protocols. Those protocols, uh, if you do, uh, yeah. So those uh, those uh, protocols are stand 
time off, we need to join other class. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry, so I will see you on 7, okay, at 7 p.m. We still have lab session. Thank you so, mu so much for your reminding me, okay. Yeah, thank you.